identify leaders. Some people are big picture people and they want to know the why, and some people are more like, just tell me the how, I don't need to know why, I just I want to get it done. But for the big picture people, we want to know why is it important to identify leaders. Okay, so give more than you take. This is a Sensi family core value. Um, you know, Orville mentioned it in his keynote. Developing leaders from the perspective of the way that you can bless their lives and the way that you can give more than you can take for them is not only a much more comfortable way to work with and train people, it is significantly more rewarding, all right? Um, I'm not saying that this, you know, translates to anyone in this room, but if you're doing it, I, I would need to develop this person in order to attain a goal for me, like that's gonna help me promote or me earn an incentive trip or whatever it is, that person will really feel that, and they're not going to be, unless they are a saint, um, they're not going to be highly motivated by what that does for you. Um, if you're really focused in on what that does for them, it's much more engaging, excuse me, and uh, more powerful and, and just much more successful, right? So give them your take. Um, I want to ask yourself, do I want a sales job with Sensi or do I want a legacy? Okay, and there's no right or wrong answer, but if you're in the I want a legacy category, then identifying and developing your future leaders is the way that you build that legacy. Um, you only need to look at the compensation plan to understand that more volumes, more active people, more success generates you more promotions, more income, more incentive trips, etc. Um, the legacy aspect, uh, like Sensi is, a, Sensi is a real business. Like I don't know if people do this to you, but they're like, so how's that little candle thing going that you do, or whatever it is? <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how successful you are, that's the way that they kind of view it. But we know that this is a real thing, this is a tangible thing, this is something that you can have, you know, step your children up into, or, or whatever it is in the future. So if you want to build a legacy, um, and you want to be remembered for doing something meaningful within your Sensi business, then it is very important to identify and develop your leaders. Okay, so what is a leader? A leader is someone who brings the best out of their team, right? And that's a very individual thing as well as being a broad perspective thing. You want to be encouraging people and you want to be supporting people to be their very best, Susan, be their very best, Jackson, whoever it is in your team. Um, you want to make it your mission to bring the best out of that person and that's that's what being a leader is, and that's how you identify future leaders. If they're already undertaking these sorts of behaviours, then they're someone that is should be attracting your attention. Um, they help others become more than they could be on their own, right? Sometimes this can be as simple as, and you would not believe the, the impact this will have, believing in someone until they're ready to believe in themselves, okay? so. That can come from the fact that you know Sensi is a fantastic business opportunity, that you know um, that home office have our back, you know that this person is incredibly intelligent even though they may have been hearing a lot of um, things to the contrary. You're willing to believe in them and um, help them become more than they could have been on their own. Um, focuses and refocuses their downline. People's attentions waver. That is totally normal, okay? Um, particularly, it's, it's usually human nature that when things get hard or when you have a series of little bits of crappy luck, then you tend to start to emotionally withdraw from the thing, which in our case is the sensitive business. Um, it's the worst thing you possibly do, but when you recognise that as a leader, you can see when people are maybe a little bit disappointed and you can help them refocus into something they find joy in and you can help them re-engage in their business. Um, you praise down and commiserate up. It's very tempting, you know, for example, do anyone remember Timon and Pumba? Um, it's very tempting when you get up at the crack of eight and it was sold out by ten past seven, you know, <laughs> to have a bit of a moment. Um, you don't want to be taking that into your team and for, for future leaders, you'll notice that they won't do this. They won't go and have a look to their downline because they know that that's not fair and that that will negatively impact them beyond your little tantrum that you will get over in no time at all. Um, if you want to have your little tantrum and kick rocks, that's cool, everyone does it, I highly recommend it, and you can just get over it really quickly, but you want to do that with your upline. You want to do that with your business mentor. You want to do that with home office, you know, or, you know, you want to go up, 
all right? Because that's what they're there for. They're there to support you. They're invested in your success and they will just let you have your little moment and then, you know, we all move on. Um, a leader doesn't speak whinies, okay? Um, people love to focus on, I'm entitled to have this opinion and I don't have to be sunshine and rainbows and no one's asking you to be sunshine and rainbows, okay? But you've got to think about what, what happens when you bring this whinge, this whine, into a group setting? Like, is that creating a positive result for anybody? My answer, you can fight me outside later if you don't agree with me, but like, my answer is no. Um, bringing that into there, you're not looking for a solution, you're looking for attention. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, so we want to get above that. A leader is someone who doesn't speak my news. Um, a leader has their own personal goals and actively chases them. Unless you have a downline or a team of saints, um, they're not going to want to bust their butt to make sure that you get something that you want. Okay? The best way to get people to bust their butt is by leading by example. You know, and the whole, you know, do what I say, not what I do kind of thing, that really doesn't translate very well in Sensi. Um, it's incredibly demotivating if you've got someone instructing you to do something a certain way and you see full well that's not what they're prepared to do. Um, something I communicate to my team is I will never ask you to do something that I'm not prepared to do myself. In fact, that I'm not prepared to do myself and take photos a second time just to show you. Um, and sets a strong positive example. I know I've put this in here twice, but it really is important. Um, you want to be doing, or if you're identifying your leaders or you're identifying this within yourself, you want to be doing the right thing, you want to be doing the helpful thing, you want to be doing the in line with Sensi's core values thing. Orville spoke about the things that disappoints him in Sensi when consultants do it. That's like your roadmap of what not to do. Okay? So your team will emulate what you do, whether you think you're showing it or not. And you will see this when you start to run reports, which we'll talk about in a moment. There, you have a leader that disengages, and they think they're hiding it really well. You can see on their stats that, that their team is disengaging too. All right, so setting a strong positive example, that's really important. All right, what are the markers of a future leader? It's very easy to say we want to identify and develop leaders, but what, what is going to show me that someone is a potential leader? All right, consistent sponsoring. So they're going wide fast. This is really a network marketing expression, but it does translate well to our business once again. If you look at the compensation plan, you'll understand why. Building your front line nice and wide is the basis of your business. All right. If you if you're trying to build a Lego tower or a you know block tower and you build it in a straight line, it's very wobbly and it's very unstable. So you want to be building that that base. There's also another reason you want to be doing that in that when you're starting out you're getting most of your leadership bonuses at, at any level from the performance of your front line. So that's what's rewarding you and compensating you financially for doing what you're doing as a leader. If you see someone that's sponsoring and going wide fast, that is an incredible hallmark of a future leader. Um, they'll have good to great frontline retention and promotion. They're frontline focused. So I presume you guys have um, been with Media Manly earlier today. She was doing the frontline focus. I'm sure she rocked it. She's an amazing presenter, an amazing consultant and person. Um, you want to look for people that have that, that frontline focus. They've got people that are coming in and at least some of the time doing something and, and sticking with it for a little while because that's, that's a hallmark of a good leader. They're helping people catch on and anchor into this business and that's that's the recipe for success, pretty much. Um, creating opportunities for skill building. And this is the, the flip side of go wide fast. You want to go wide fast, but you also want to train deep. And I don't mean you want to micromanage people down in your downline that have other great sponsors or um, great leaders or people who, who should be stepping up. You don't want to be um, stepping over the top of people that need space to grow. Um, but you do want to be offering opportunities for people within your organisation to connect with you and learn from you. You don't know what's going to happen um, in between those people. This business is not always a business for everyone long term, and that's totally cool. If you have someone that may roll up to you once, twice, three times, you don't want to be a complete stranger with no credibility when that person reaches you. Um, this one 
might make a few people a little bit angry or a little bit uncomfortable, but when you're looking at the markers of a future leader, it will be someone who's easily attaining a consistent 500 plus PRV monthly. Like this is non-negotiable for a leader. This is non-negotiable if you want to get paid as a leader. It's, that's, it's just like breathing, okay? So when you see someone that's easily doing that, it's very um, straightforward to communicate to them like, hey, you're already doing what would be earning you leadership bonuses if you had a few team members. Like, how cool, it's like money for jam. You know, this whole leadership bonuses thing. All right, so that's another hallmark. So I hope that that's given you um, a little bit of insight. Right, um, how can I use reports to help me identify potential leaders? People are scared witless of the performance report. I don't know why. Um, you can't break the workstation, and if you could, I would have done it. Um, get into those performance reports, have a click around and, and learn what they do. Make mock-up reports, pull data that might be a little bit old and, and just have a look at it. If you like to nerd out, you can take it out to Excel and you can do all sorts of amazing things with it, but the actual functionality of the workstation is actually really good. Um, you want to be opening your leadership report. If you don't have directors promoted out underneath you yet, then your leadership report and your downline report are going to look exactly the same. But leadership reports are a great place to start. Um, you can sort data by clicking or tapping the category headers um, either on your phone or on your PC, which is really handy. So for example, if you're looking at, okay, I want to see who's got great team wholesale volume or who's doing big things in PRV or who's sponsoring a lot of consultants, by getting that category header and tapping it, it will, it, you've got to tap it twice, It'll sort it in, you know, descending order, and you can have a look. Wow, that person is pulling up amazing TWV. They've recruited some rock stars, but they're they're not promoting because they're not putting in 500 PRV. Like easy fix, you know. If it's if it's something as simple as that, it's an easy fix. And once people get that rush of promotion and that rush of stepping up and being a leader, then you'll find they'll start to gain that momentum on their own. Um, drill into downline to have a look at their individual team or downline. When you click on that person's name, individually, it's a hyperlink in those reports. I hope I'm not overwhelming anyone. It's a blue clicky dot line, you know, letters. Um, click that, and you'll see there's a button that says drill into downline. If you think I'm being a little bit silly about the fact that people are scared of these reports, I phoned consult support one day and because my reports were misbehaving, and I <laughs> said to them, listen, can you just see if you can emulate this on, on your end or whether it's a problem with me? Um, can you just drill into this person's downline, please? And the consultant support representative said, I've always been too scared to touch that button. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was going to do. I'm like, no actual drill comes out. You know, like, it's all right. <laughs> be cool. But um, what the drill into downline does um, is it shows you just the people under them. So their frontline and, and subsequent, you know, recruits there. So you can really hone in on what's going on in, and I, I suck at making that face, what's going on in um, Kelly's team right now. And, and you can have a look at them in a, easy to focus on kind of a way. Cool trick, um, on the computer, uh, you can only do this on PC, so I'm sorry if you're really a mobile phone or tablet user, but um, on the PC, you can select multiple months by holding the, down the shift key and selecting from one to another. So say for example, you wanna see how someone's performed over a 12 month period, or over an incentive period, whatever that may be. You can click from one month to the other, um, hold down the shift, you can click run report, and it will pull up the collective data over that time also very handy for especially for looking at who's consistently doing big things um, oh the other thing with the drilling into downline it has a little a graph there and you can um, manipulate various things like their TLV and their PRV and actually if you're a visual person actually get a visual idea of what's going on if you see someone that's been cruising along and then all of a sudden they've like dropped off the edge then you may be going to want to say hey listen what what happened in July? Like, is there something going on that I can help you with and, and work with you on? Um, and and you can go from there and, and identify that before they leave. Um, there's another another expression, you know, the fastest road out of this business is paid with disappointment. So when people get into a little negative spiral, sometimes it's too late if you catch on three months later when you could have picked them up and dusted them off and, and helped them out then. All right, set your stars. I'll go the expression. <laughs> Translate this lady that handles now. Cool. Hey, um, um, 
How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. It can seem extremely daunting if you're looking at, okay, I want to be a director, I want to be walking across that stage, I want to be dancing with the flow, you know, whatever it is. And you're like, whoa, I need like 10,000 GWV and I need, you know, this many whatevers and, and so on. That can be very, very intimidating. So not only can it be intimidating for you, it can be intimidating for people that you're trying to develop because it just seems so far from where they are that it doesn't seem tempting to get started. If you can work on setting your teammates on the path to start consultant, which is that sort of one bite at a time, it's a couple of promotions away. It doesn't seem like trying to see the top of Mount Everest. Um, and then not only promoting to that level, but maintaining that level. You get four star consultants who are being paid a title, there's 10,000 TWV right there. Like all of a sudden that doesn't seem quite so daunting. Um, you don't have to turn people into superstar directors in 12 months. Okay, it's just a matter of getting people on that path. You need everybody. You need everybody from, from hobbyist to complete rock star to build a team. If you've ever looked at the compensation plan, you'll understand that if you have a team made up entirely of directors, you won't promote <coughs> and you won't get paid a title because some of this is based on your team wholesale volume. And when they've promoted, they've gone out into your group wholesale volume. Like I don't want to overwhelm you with it, but you need everybody. Um, in their own unique abilities. Right, emotionally speaking, this can be really difficult for some people. Um, we live in a competitive kind of dog eat dog world and it's very easy to fall into this trap where you recruit a rock star, which is your dream scenario, if I might add. But you recruit a rock star and you start to feel a little bit inferior because this person is smashing you in, you know, whatever it is, that, that area that you maybe aren't quite so strong in. I want to tell you, that there is no luckier, no greater experience than having someone in your team who can smash your results. The only thing better than being at the top of your own food chain is having someone in your downline be you, okay? Um, what I'd encourage you to do, um, and teach your, teach your future leaders to do, is play to win, right? Seems obvious. There's a very big difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. Right? So if you think about scaling in your business as climbing a rock wall. Um, if you're climbing a rock wall with the intention of getting to the, getting to the top and pressing the red button and saying how long it took you, you're very focused on where's my next handhold? Where am I about to make a smart choice? How can, I, how can I do this more efficiently? If you're playing not to lose, if you're playing not to fall off that wall, you are not going to make the same kinds of decisions and you're not going to take the same kinds of action because you're petrified of failing. Right, so play to win versus playing not to lose. Play the long game. Uh, as a society, this isn't just me and this isn't just you. Um, instant gratification is a really big thing. Pretty much since the microwave was invented, our patience has been on the decline. Um, and if you haven't identified this in yourself, um, I noticed that my attention span <coughs> significantly dropped as soon as you could um, like rewind live television. I noticed that when I was watching a, like a football match, off, sorry Queenslanders, that's AFL I'm talking about there, but like yeah. I'm watching a football match on TV, um, if I was on a channel that wasn't on Foxtel, I wasn't paying attention properly anymore because, you know, I could rewind it, right? So our attention span is short um, and we're looking for instant gratification, we want what feels good right now. Um, that is not really the best strategy in your, in your sensi business, you know, I'm like full of cliches today, I've had a dollar for every cliche, but this is really is a marathon, not a sprint. And if you've ever tried to do any kind of long distance run, if you go, you know, all out, then you're a sad, crying, puffing mess, you know, in the first 50 metres and you're probably not going to make it to the end. So you want to be making decisions that are going to benefit you long term. You don't want to be going all out and then collapsing because that's very difficult for your team to navigate when you're hot and cold, for example. We don't naturally trust people who are hot and cold. It's very difficult for you to navigate, for your customers to navigate. So if you can teach your team to be willing to play the long game, and you teach yourself to be willing to play the long game, you'll be in a much more strong position. Um, look at the trickle-down effect. Everything that you do when you're interacting with your front line, and I'm so glad that you've heard Megan's presentation, but everything you do when you're interacting with your front line teaches them what a good sponsor does, what a good leader does. So if you're seeing someone who is having that that roll down effect, then they're definitely someone that you want to be, you know, 
bringing out and, and showing them that just the, the power that they have, the power of influence. Um, same thing we probably very nicely, and which is something sometimes I struggle with, um, I do have fluffy duck friends who I run my words by sometimes and ask them to get the grump out of it for me, but if you have someone who is maybe whinging or maybe being a bit lazy or cutting a few corners or getting in that <coughs> area of compliance, that will also have a trickle down effect. When leaders disengage out of their business, their team follows suit every single time. It, it shows up like the proverbial on your reports, you'll see it time and time again. So you yeah, understand the, the power of the trickle down effect. Another thing I might add, um, when we are building relationships, and I don't mean <coughs> stepping over strong sponsors or, or future strong sponsors, but when you work with someone that might be a couple of levels down from you in the business and you get them going really powerfully, um, then their sponsor is like, oh wow, if I just pull my finger out a little bit more, I can promote or I can earn this incentive. And then their sponsor's like, holy cannoli. <laughs> Faith come down here specifically to tell me not to swear. So, yeah. um, so um, they're like, holy cannoli. Um, I can promote and that's when you're starting to build uh, a powerful business and, and your leaders are doing the same. The sincerity test. Okay, you want to have a checks and balances system because you can't pour your heart and soul into everybody. You might maintain it for a little while when you when you have a smallish organisation or smallish front line. You can't do it forever because work to the wise, what happens is you eventually burn yourself out, you end up in health crisis and you have chronic fatigue. Oh no way, that's just my story. But I would like to cut you past that if I possibly could by giving you a, a tool and something you can pass on to your downline as well in how to identify who not deserves your um, time and energy but warrants your time and energy. You can ask them. How do you feel about this business? And I mean, if they flinch when you say business, that might, might give you an idea. But um, if they give you an answer along the lines of, well, I'll try. You know, chances are they're a temporary consultant, which once again, is not a bad thing. This is sometimes people are in this business for a reason, sometimes they're in it for a season, and that's, and sometimes they're in it for a lifetime, which is awesome. But if they give you the well, I'll try, they're not someone that you want to be having one hour Zoom meetings with every Wednesday, okay? Because you want to get frustrated really fast. Um, if they give you something on the lines, well, you know, like, I'll do the best I can. That's that's stronger. You know, that's that's definitely more promising than well, I'll try. I hate the word try, and I do my absolute best not to use it in my own vernacular, because try is not do, you know? and. Hey, for the Star Wars fans, anyone who was really excited to see that we partnered with Star Wars, you know, Yoda quote, do or do not, there is no try. So that's a, that's a handy one to know too. Um, you may have someone that says, I'll do whatever it takes. They're highly motivated, usually because they're moving away from a position of pain. Um, it's much more powerful to move as a motivator, to move away from pain, than it is to move towards pleasure. I know that sounds crazy, but you know, if, if I do X, Y, Z, I get a brand new car, yeah, that might keep me going for a little while. If I don't do X, Y, Z, I have to say no to my child doing gymnastics, you can bet I'm fronting up even when I don't feel like it. Um, remember, that it's very important to watch their feet and not their mouth. And what this means is what your people are doing, not what they're saying they're going to do. All right? Because once again, that gets really frustrating, um, particularly when someone comes in to your organisation and they're like, oh, I'm an ex schmuckleware consultant, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the top seller, top recruiter, top this and that. And you're like, gravy train, booyah. And then you, like, you see them and they're doing nothing. And it's like, what? You know, so don't hang all your hopes on someone who's making a lot of noise with their mouth. Let's have a look at what they're doing in their performance reports is the point I'm trying to get. All right, flipping rocks and finding diamonds. If you want to flip, if you want to find a diamond, be ready to flip a lot of rocks. And this is just the reality of the situation. And I find that giving people context and a, um, and a real sense of what the work rate is like is a lot better than deluding them. Um, for anyone in this room who's ever been pregnant, first time that you're pregnant, something happens, your left ear gets hot or something like that, you're on Google like, oh my God, is this harming the baby? You know? <laughs> and then your doctor says to you, no, that's totally normal, and then you can relax. 
So it's the same thing with this. If you give people a realistic expectation, they're much more relaxed, even when things potentially may go wrong. Um, this is not my breakdown, but it is something that I found to be uh, definitely demonstrable in, in my reporting and my experience. This is something that one of my business mentors gave to me that I hope that it gives you some perspective and it keeps you going when perhaps you, you might sponsor or your, your future leader may sponsor a few people who don't quite you know, set the rule alight. All right, for every 10 consultants you personally sponsor, you can expect on average two who will do nothing. So who here has had a consultant join and then all of a sudden they're in the witness protection program? <laughs> yeah, that happens, all right? Or you have someone who joins the same way I kind of join a gym. You know, we're all best intentions. And then maybe it just doesn't really pan out and uh, we just hide the gym card under the thing and pretend that never happened, all right? So you're gonna have people that will do that with their kid and that's, that's also fine. Um, statistically speaking, you're likely to recruit two hobbyists. You need hobbyists, hobbyists are great. They will, you know, we have an expression in my team, you know, we call them the little fish. You know, they're awesome, they just keep swimming and, and they're very happy. Um, so you, you've got your two hobbyists and that's awesome. Two solid sellers. Uh, once again, you can find me outside later if you disagree with me on this, but I believe the people that are doing consistent parties, the consultants are doing consistent parties in some way, are the strongest sellers in this business. Um, so you'll have the people who are doing regular parties and they're keeping that momentum rolling for themselves. Um, two lead to star consultants. Fantastic. They're your, they're your growing people. And you never know when they're going to take off and run. Some small shift may happen in their business or their life and they move from being that, that statistic to being the diamond that we're really looking for. Um, one star to superstar consultant. Once again, as I mentioned earlier with the compensation plan, we need everybody in, in strong, sustainable teams. So that's fantastic. If that's the category they fall in, wonderful. Don't try and force them into being a director and have them disenfranchised and have them leaving. And one diamond. And the best thing about diamonds, and like some of the diamonds in my organisation are sitting in this room right now, which is um, really cool. But the great thing about diamonds is they could have a spud for an upline. They're still going to smash it. All right, and when you find these people, it's like the payoff for all those other rocks that you flipped um, really becomes all worthwhile. All right, so I just want to give you a realistic expectation. And you can teach this kind of breakdown to your, to your future leaders so they're not getting upset when they recruit five people and they've, they've recruited the two have done nothing, you know, the two hobbyists and, you know, one person who's just done a, maybe certified and, then, and they're like, this whole sponsoring and team building thing is BS, man. I'm not doing it anymore. Right? I didn't swear. Okay. <laughs> How do we work together on leadership development? All right, so it's very easy to say, we want to identify and develop leaders. What does that actually mean? Um, and we can, we can break this down into all sorts of like small tangible examples, but this will give you a broad overview and a way that you can fit into a structure that works for you. Because that's the best thing about being an entrepreneur, is you get to choose your own adventure every single day. So what you want to be doing is you want to be running with your runners, okay? So those people that are diamonds, those people that are, you know, the next row um, along, um, they want to get out and they want to move and they want to do something. And they're the people who will come and find you. And they're the people who will come and find your, your future leaders, you know, when they, they come into their teams. They're the people that you can give that one-to-one -one personalised attention to and meet them where they're at. You want to walk with your walkers, okay? Uh, give them group-based training opportunities. You will not, if, if the situation is not true right now, you will not have the time to give everyone that one-to-one -one attention and it has to stop with someone. So who, who is that person going to be? This is how we're going to filter this out so it's not a matter of you stop that one-to-one -one attention with the person who really would have absolutely smashed it had you have had the time and energy. Um, group-based training opportunities. You don't need to use Facebook. To do this, it's a convenient platform. It's like the white bread of social media. Most people have it or are familiar with it. Um, that works really well for the people who are just like, just getting a roll on. And they may be the person that breaks into a run, all right, which is fantastic. And this might be the thing that ignites them. This might be the thing that identifies them to you. Um, crawl with your crawlers. I know it's not the greatest, you know, term, uh, but it just fits in with the analogy nicely. Um, crawl with your crawlers. They're going to get fulfilment and training and knowledge and interaction with you from your team page, which is really great. 
Um, they're going to get it from Facebook Lives. They're going to get it from webinars. It's kind of like the mass market appeal. You know, that's that's where you meet those people at. Once again, this is not my example, though. You are not a 7-Eleven. This comes from Megan and Ryan Clements, who are my business mentors. They're Canadian SSDs. They're in Mark Line. They're, they're fantastic people and consultants and leaders. Um, Meg shared this with me in an attempt to avoid the very self-destructive path I was on to burn out. Unfortunately, I had to fall on my own silly face to figure this out, but once again, hopefully we can shortcut me past that. Meg relayed to me that um, they, were, they were, you know, in bed one night and she's trying to hide her, hide her phone lights and it's not disturbing him, answering a downline question at some ridiculous hour, and he just turned to her and said, Meg, you are not a 7-Eleven. Right? She was like, whoa. You do not need to answer questions around the clock. You do not need to micromanage people and solve their problems around the clock. Um, there is no such thing as a wax emergency. <laughs> we neither sell brain plumbers or vital organs. No one will die if they have to wait until the morning or they have to wait until Monday to have their question answered. And the amazing thing when you start to put this into effect in your business is the amount of times that that person who's really needy and demanding and you're just like, Nope, not today. I'll, I'll contact you tomorrow. Then they, they, if they don't do the question mark, question mark, which like word to the wise, if you ever send me a question and then follow it up with question mark, question mark, each question mark represents a decade in which I will not reply. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Um, but they send you the question mark, question mark, and then the next morning you go to address their, their question, and they're like, oh, don't worry, I found it. Ta-da! You know, talk on something really valuable there. Um, the power of a low jump. This is another little life hack. Um, I'm giving away all my trade, you know, secrets of the trade to my downline. There's probably people in here going, damn it, she does that to me. Um, this is what a low jump is. When someone asks for your help or support or training or guidance, then what you want to do is you want to let them know in a reasonable hour that you have acknowledged their question and you want to give them a small <coughs> task that will build them towards either getting your support or getting closer to the answer before you go all in on helping them. And this will help you avoid a lot of frustration and heartache. So for example, it may be, I want to learn more about Facebook parties. Okay, tell me everything you know on Facebook parties. If you like the CMAC I once was, you start like information bombing them on Facebook parties and give them 20 minutes of your time teaching them all about Facebook parties and they never run a Facebook party in their life. And then you get really frustrated. Um, so what I will do, usually when someone asks me for help, is I'll say, right, that's great. Um, if you could just message me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, message me your phone number, I'll call you, and we'll go over that. Or if you could just email me, because like this is legit, I'm like Dory the fish, okay? As soon as something escapes out of my attention, it is gone. So if you just email me with that request, I will get back to you at this time. If they can't be aid, sending you an email, or they can't remember to contact you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, you're wasting your time and your energy um, in, in helping them because they're not going to execute on it. So save yourself part of it. And that's it. Um, <laughs> all right, so you've done really well to get through that. I didn't see anyone nod off unless you've got like eyes painted on your glasses, in which case, you know, kudos to you, innovators. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. If you want to revisit a slide because I went past it like Samuel and a hummingbird, we got really fast talking when I get excited. Um, but yeah, if you have a question, now's the time to ask. Other than that, we just like be rebellious and like, you know, <laughs> There's people in this room like, don't ask a question. <laughs> Now that looks like it's it guys. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. I really appreciate it.